Hello Dramas and Other Creatures. This video is a follow-up to the one I recently did in which I introduced you to the joys of the two-for-one stroke. And it's my default way for playing double strokes. Um, the idea being that we throw the stick with one hand movement, but we get two sounds out of it. This thing. And so on. Once we've got the hang of that a little bit, we're going to look at how to combine that with the single strokes. And for me, this is the most useful way of using double strokes in sort of regular drum set playing. If you're playing rock and pop music, if you play a bit of jazz, whatever it might be, we will combine single strokes and double strokes all the time to give us nice textures and so on. So these are some very basic exercises that you can use once you've started to get a feel for the two for one double or the single stroke rebound, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can then start doing these exercises to teach your hands and your brain and all those mechanisms and stuff to be able to combine single strokes and double strokes. And so when we're playing the set, if you're playing a fill or something, you might have a pattern, play something like that, and then being able to fill in with doubles sounds kind of cool. Something like that. Or if you're playing 16th note groove on the hi-hat with two hands like single strokes, diggy diggy dig of disco or something being able to double that up is very cool uh, it gives you all sorts of textural possibilities uh, obviously if you want to do a sort of swell thing on your cymbals and uh, even when you're playing like ghost notes on the snare being able to throw some little doubles things like that allow you to add little embellishments that aren't like overwhelming fills something like that and at some point I'll film myself doing this on the drum kit and do a bit of a video about that in application but in the meantime what we're going to do is start thinking about single strokes to double strokes single strokes to double strokes and the aim is to try and get a smoother flow between those two things so that eventually only your ears really consider the difference between the singles and the doubles so um, if you're playing It's kind of a continuous feeling of single strokes, really. Um, eventually, we're not thinking about the fact that sometimes we're doubling up. Okay, so let's get started. The first exercise, we're just going to play a bar of singles and a bar of doubles. So I'm thinking about eighth notes, uh, one and two and three and four and, and then doubling that up. So you can think of it as eighths and sixteenths, but I'm only really gonna focus on counting eighths to myself. And it goes like this. I think I just demonstrated anyway, but one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, four and one and two and three and four and. Simple, right? Um, what we're looking out for here is first and foremost, when we start including single strokes, even if we've got the hang of the two for one and we notice that our knuckle is only moving once, if we're really making sure that the, the hands are playing one movement to produce two sounds, when you start combining with single strokes, you might notice that the hand reverts back to wanting to play kind of two movements for the two sounds that you're making. So that's thing number one to look out for. Another thing is when people start this, especially I, I like teaching my students how to get a nice bouncy stroke on the stick, but very often people will be overplaying the single stroke, so giving a big bounce. And when the sing doubles come along, when the doubles come along, you have to kind of reduce the height. Uh, and that's not gonna really let you play a nice fluid motion between the singles and the doubles as if it's just a textural change. It's a big dynamic change, there's a big energetic change between those two things. So what's a good idea is to learn how to play the single strokes at the same height that your doubles would be. Um, the way to do that obviously is just to play the doubles a little bit and consider the height of the singles in terms of that and then when you're practicing be vigilant about that. You might even practice in a mirror just to check. Another thing that you might be aware of, and you might be able to see that when I'm doing it, sometimes the forearm starts to get a little bit too involved. We want to really try and get the movement down 
to something that the hands are doing and the shoulder, elbow, all the arm bits are just helping to hold the hand in place, not involved in motoring the stick, right? And, you know, that whole thing comes together to be a nice relaxed approach. So once we can do one bar of single strokes, one bar of double strokes, we're going to do half, half. So we're going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and to notice what's going on in my body while I'm doing it. Okay, next we're just going to do one beat of singles, one beat of doubles. So it's like this, one and two and three and four and one and and four and and two and three and four and Do it at a tempo that is commensurate with where you're at with the double strokes. Don't try to rush it, but if you go too slowly, it's not very often that I say you can go too slowly with something, but if you go too slowly with something like this, uh, it can be a bit difficult to keep the doubles even. So if you're like, it's probably not a bad thing to practice in due course, but it's almost like I would go back and do that once you've kind of mastered the doubles somewhat and then want to really fine tune it and talk to yourself. Um, but that's it, okay? so. We've got one bar, half a bar, one beat, like this. And you can kind of combine that in any way you like. You could spend the week playing just one bar, one bar, and then the next beat, half a bar, half a bar. Or you can do a certain number of repetitions. Any way you want to combine that that keeps you interested and entertained is fine. I don't, don't know that there's a strict methodology to that that you must adhere to. Anyway, moving on to the next exercise. This time we're going to play our eight eighth notes, single strokes, but then we're just going to double up one eighth note at a time. So if I'm playing one and two and three and four and, I'm then going to start adding a double on the and of four, then I'm going to include the four, then the and of three, then the three and so on, work my way back until I have a whole bar of double strokes. It looks like this. One and two and three and, three and four and we're going to add a double. One and two and three and four and one. And then, depending on how you want to do it, you could then go back the other way by adding single strokes until you're back to a whole bar of singles. And you can go up and down that little ladder of double stroke options uh, as much as you like. And again, those exercises are quite find quite nice that you can do something that adds variety to what you're doing, but it's not so complicated that you can't just like remember. You don't need a whole sheet of stuff. You can just like mathematically put the thing together. Um, Again, as long as you're sort of going between single strokes and double strokes, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, too much. Um, you can work out your own little routine. I am quite a fan of doing it in a routine way, though. So if you like the exercises the way I'm presenting them now, 
sit and do the first thing a bunch of times, sit and do the second thing a bunch of times, and so on and so on. The next th thing we're going to look at is just maybe focusing on just one hand being doubled and the other playing a single stroke. So we might start with just doubling the left hand. And obviously then the right hand. And so on. The final thing to do with this set of ideas is to improvise. So start off with some singles and then drop some doubles in and see what happens. Maybe you'll come up with something nice and musical. And so on. Did I resolve that? No, not really. Anyway, not nice and musical. But that's the idea. Get to the point that you feel like you can just randomly play singles and doubles, mix between the two. As I said, watching that your hands are moving in the right way, that you don't start playing two for two instead of two for one whenever you're doing the doubles. Watching that the sound and the height of your strokes is even, so we, we don't really want to hear much difference between the singles and the doubles. I always used to read about, oh, all the strokes need to sound identical, and I have a conniption because the strokes don't sound identical. But you want, you want to get them to sound as even as you possibly can, and just keep working on that until you feel some freedom to do so. Now, don't forget, it's not a 10 minute job. So try and practice this every single day for whatever amount of time you feel comfortable with and get into a routine. And over whatever period of time, your double strokes will get better and better till eventually you're playing a nice, smooth, or reasonably smooth thing. Again, <laughs> practice pad is a brutal critic. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found that useful. I'm going to produce a few more videos on this topic with the pad and I'll bring it into the drum set arena as well to show you exactly how I apply these things. And um, that's that really. So thank you very much for watching this. If you're going to use these exercises to progress your double strokes, please let me know uh, how you're getting on with it. I'm, I'd be really interested to know if the things I present are effective. Uh, meanwhile, if you think this is brilliant, a load of rubbish, whatever, whatever, please send me a comment in the comment section. If you want to suggest any other ideas that you'd like me to explore, let me know as well. Um, this is a series that I've started as a response to someone's comment. So uh, I'm reasonably happy to accommodate if I think I can offer something on a topic. And um, I think that wraps this one up. I think it's time for you to go off and practice.